to the production unit from the production units is goes to the distribution points from the distributors to it goes to the retailers and finally it is goes to the customers so is a chain which combines all these entities and all these entities does their activities from raw materials to the final customer till the final customer is yes achieved so yes now if you go to the definitions of different definitions now there are many supply chain specialists who have given the definitions one such definition is given by christopher in 1992 and what he says supply chain is network of organizations supply chain is network of organizations that say that are involved through upstream and downstream linkages in different process and activity that produce value in the form of products and services in the hands of ultimate customers managing these links and delivering the product and service to the customer in a cost effective way is supply chain management and levy in 2022 he also gave an another definitions what do you mean by supply chain he said that supply chain is a set of approaches here it differs from christopher utilized to efficiently integrate suppliers manufacturers warehouse and stores so that merchandise is produced and distributed in the right quantities to the right locations at the right time in order to minimize the system under cost while satisfying the service level requirements so i will just explain what this definition says the definition the first definition speaks about the upstream and of downstream linkages now if all the companies have upstream linkages and downstream so upstream when you say that materials comes from the suppliers is a call upstream linkages and materials goes to the final destination it calls a downstream linkages now in different processes that produce value for the now managing these links linkages and delivering the product to the customer in a cost effective way ultimate aim of the supply chain management is that the customer should get the product in right time in right place and at the right cost also so levy in 2022 highlighted that he told that supply chain is nothing but the integration of different entities like supplier suppliers work is to supply the raw materials manufacturers is concerned with the producing the converting the goods warehouse we store the where the finished goods are kept as well as the stores so that merchandise is produced and distributed in right quantities now what is the role of logistics if you go through this logistics expenditure accounts to a major chunk of expenditure in any organizations and if you take a developing country like india 30 to 20% of gdp say expenditure is accounted for logistic thus by improving the efficiency of logistic operations logistics make an important contribution to the economy as a whole yes second logistics support the movements and flow of many economic transaction is an important activity in facilitating the sale of virtually all goods and services so first is say that major expenditure so why logistic is a importance why you company should manage logistics because it say logistic expenditure is 30 to 20% of a gdp and logistics support the movement of flow that means logistic is very important because it facilitates the movement of goods and services in the economic transactions and one of the fundamental well that logistic red value is creating utility so what type of utility it creates we will see in the next slide now there are different types of utilities form utility possession utility time utility and place utility 
what do you mean by form utility the process of creating the good and services putting them in proper form for suppose we have a wood now we will put the wood into a form convert that into a form and make a chair or a table or make some furniture so that will come to the use of the customers as such the wood may not be in his say in the form original form may not be may not be so useful to the customers if it is form into a if it is converted into furniture then it may give you more customer satisfaction or it will give more customer use and second is possession utility the value add to the product because the customer is able to take the actual position like credit arrangement and loans now today is the when you possession utility means when by adding value to a product suppose you give credit arrangement and loans then it will be easy for the customers to take possession of the product time utility is the value added by having an item when it is needed this is most important because if a customer wants a product then at the time when he need it you should deliver the product at that time and also place utility we should deliver the product and service where where it is needed suppose i am in say in bhubneshwar i need the product at bhubneshwar the product should be available in bhubneshwar then only the place utility is created if the product is not available at the place where i need it then the product may not be very useful to me so talking about logistic utilities we can have a form utility where we convert the goods and services into a particular form which gives a customer a use possession utility by facilitating or adding some value so that possessions can be easy time utility is the value added by having an item when it is needed and place utility by adding value where it is now another concept is value chain concept the value chain concept may be used to identify and understand the specific source of competitive advantages and how they are related to buyer value value is the amount a customer is willing to pay for the product and services provided by an organization value added is the difference between customer pays and the cost of the organization providing that product and service value is added is the difference between say what the customer pays and the cost of organization providing that product or service so <laughs> the value chain concept may be used to identify what is the source of competitive advantage now value chain is important because it gives you say competitive advantage to an organization and how they are related to the buyer value and value as i told you is the amount the customer is willing to pay for the product and service provided by an organization and value added is suppose the cost of manufacturing a furniture may be say 20000 and the buyer is paying 25000 thereby i am adding value of 5000 to the organization so for porter defines five categories of primary activity in competing in any industries so he told about inbound logistics activity associated with receiving and storing and disseminating input to the product so inbound logistic means the logistics which come inside to the organizations that mean receiving first when you receive raw materials we store it we receive it store it and disseminate into the product and operation is an activity in this transformation activities operation is a transformation activity where we transport the input into final product form and after operation that comes outbound logistics that mean as activity associated with collecting and storing physical distribution of the product to the buyers so outbound logistics means those which is produced those products which are produced at the operation stage that must go say product to the buyers that means go to the buyers and outbound logistics is the activities 
which is associated with collecting and storing physical distribution of the product to the buyers and marketing and sales these are the activities associated with providing a means by which buyers can purchase the product and inducing them to do so much as advertising promotion etc so nowadays marketing and sales is a part of say any say primary activity of any companies why because market marketing or sales makes the product awareness creates awareness about the product and advertising promotions also creates awareness about the product customers come to know about the product through advertising and promotions thereby they can make a proper decisions about the product so and service starts after the products have been sold to the customers activity associated with providing service to the enhancer maintain the value of the product such as installation and repair suppose i say sold a say, say water filter or that means the primary work of any company to install it or a, say a ac that is to be install it and repair it because all consumer durables are subject to say make or subject to fail during its course of time and the activity or the associated with service is to after sales service the company should undertake the responsibility of repairing the product whenever the customer wants yes then another concept is physical distribution management is concerned with ensuring the product is in the right place and right time pdm is very important why it is important because once the product is not at the right place and the right time then the value is not created this so pdm is defined as concerned with ensuring the product that means in a supply chain management or in a logistic management the product should be at the right time at the right place if i want the product today then i the product should be available today in a particular place if it is if it is available after 5 days then the utility of the product may not be announced so we will see the components of supply chain management there are four principal components of pdm namely order processing stock labels of inventory warehousing and transportations order processing in the first of the four stages in logistic process if you take the logistic process order processing now the efficiency of order processing has a direct impact on the lead time orders are received from the sales team through sales department many companies establish regular supply routes they remain relatively stable over a period of time providing that supply performs satisfactorily now what is order processing order generally comes from the sales team and if the order is particular if the order is processing is delayed then it will have impact on direct impact on the lead times what is the lead time lead time is the time difference between when a order is placed and the date on which the say order is received so if order processing is delayed then order placing will be delayed similarly the we will get we will receive the products in late orders are received from the sales team through sales department many company establish regular supply routes that remain relatively stable over a period of time so that means the supply routes from the supplier should be stable over a period of time that supplier perform satisfactorily inventory is an important or uh, the critical area of pdm and because stock levels have a direct effect on the levels of service and customer satisfaction because i told you that if the company goes out of stock or as a retail store goes out of stock then it will lose competitive advantage 
competitive advantage means he will lose his sales to his competitors secondly he will lose his say market value that means he will also lose the say uh, reliability and customers will not believe such retailers who are not able to provide the goods in right time so the optimum step level stock level is the function of a type of market of in which the company operates yes for companies can say that they never run out of stocks if stock outs happen regularly as i told the market share will be lost to more efficient competitors that means those competitors who maintain regular stock will have a larger market share companies whose stocks say regularly go stock outs the key lies in ascertaining the reordering point reorder point means when the this is a level where order are placed carrying steps at levels below the reorder point might ultimately mean stock out that means you are risking or for a stock out position because if you maintain your inventory below the reorder point whereas two high stock levels are unnecessary and expensive to maintain both are say dangerous to the organizations carrying inventory below the reorder point may ultimately lead to stock out that means your goodwill of the organization may be lost in otherwise you will lose your sales you will lose your competitive advantages but on the other hand if you keep too much stock levels this also are non necessary and it capitals are piled off capitals your say opportunity cost of the capital is very high and expensive to maintain so inventory of stock management is very crucial of any pdf system and this pdf system say that optimum stock level is the function of the type of market and company should always maintain a balance between the say too low say inventory and too high inventory so it will as for the economic order point it should be a say optimum level of say inventory where the dangers can be say can be very easily tackled then come warehousing warehouse means when the finished product are stored many company functions adequately with their own on site warehouse from where goods are dispersed direct to the customers on site warehouse means the where the products are produced and it directly but there may be such situations when a farm market goods that are ordered regularly but in small quantities so it becomes more logical to locate warehouse strategically around the different around the countries and transportation can be carried out in bulk from the place of manufacture to respective warehouse where stocks wait ready for further distribution to the customers this system is used by large retail chain except that warehouse and transportations are owned and operated by them by logistic experts so warehousing many companies have their own on site warehouse from where goods are dispatched but when farms market goods that are ordered regularly but in small quantities it's more logical to have warehouse strategically around the country and trans as far as possible transportation should be carried out in bulk from place of manufacture to the respective warehouse and further distribution to the customer where stocks wait ready for further distribution to the customer this system is used by large retail chains most of the large retail chains use this system yes pdm has been neglected in the past this function has been late in adopting the integrated approach managers have now become more conscious of potential of pdm and recognize that logistic system should be designed with total function in mind a fragmented and disjointed approach to pdm is a principal cause of failure to provide satisfactory service and cause an excessive cost so 
if you go through the literature pdm has been well neglected in the past it has not been given in import, due importance as it should get nowadays what happens managers have become more conscious of the potential of pdm they have realized that pdm is very important and the logistic system should be designed with total function in mind and it should be an integrated approach rather than a fragmented or disjointed approach to pdm because a fragmented or disjointed approach of to pdm is the major cause of say failure to survive provide satisfactory service yes pdm is concerned with ensuring that individual efforts that go to make up the distribution function are optimized so that a common objective is realized this is called system approach to distribution management and major feature of pdm is that these functions be integrated so pdm is concerned more is concerned that the individual efforts go to make up the distribution are optimized suppose the products comes in time to the warehouse from the warehouse to the say to the stores from the stores to the retailers to the retailers to the customers so the, all there are individual efforts and in a say integrated approach the individual efforts are very the individual efforts should be optimized so that the common goal can be realized this is called system approach to distribution management and which is a major feature of pdm in this function is that it is integrated now in pdm there are different costs what are the costs first one is storage cost storage cost means as the number of depot will storage cost is directly related to the number of dep depots so storage cost is a function of the number of depots because there will need for more stock coverage more storage space more management etc so as as you increase our depots the storage cost will naturally increase because storage cost have a direct relationship so storage cost is a direct relationship with the number of depots because more depot means more stock coverage you have to keep more stock more stock means more more storage space you have to say take and you have to build your own warehouse or it is not possible you can say say take on rent so more management you have to keep managers say storekeepers all the salaries will be high and delivery costs the this will with this secondary transportation cost cost of delivery from the depot to the customer greater the number of depots less is the secondary mileage or lesser the delivery cost so there is a inverse relationship between delivery cost and number of depots because when delivery depots are more they are these depots are say located near to the customers greater the number of depots that means the depots become goes closer to the go closer to the customers thereby the transportation cost is minimized the greater the number of depots the less the secondary mileage or lesser the delivery cost so if you compare storage cost and delivery cost storage cost is directly related with the number of depots because more depots cost you more storage cost where delivery cost is inversely related to number of depots that means if you increase the size of the depots your delivery cost will decrease another is trucking cost this is the primary transport cost in supply of products in bulk to the depots from the central finished goods from from the central finished good warehouse or production point as the number of depots increase this cost will also increase trucking cost is the primary transport cost in supply of that means the trucking cost is the cost through which we transport so as you increase the number of depots the trucking cost will also increase so it's a direct relationship between the trucking cost has a direct relationship with the with the number of depots inventory cost is the main element inventory cost are capital cost service cost and risk cost what is capital cost the cost of physical stock 
Yeah, this is the financing charge, which is current cost of capital to a company. So capital cost increases with the increase in the physical stock. The more the physical stock, the more is the capital stock. And capital stock is nothing but the financing charge, which is the current cost of the capital to a company. And what is service cost? This is the cost of stock of management in insurance cost. That means when you stock materials in a particular warehouse or store, there is a chance of proliferation. There is a chance of theft. So this against this all uncertainties, the company go to insurance company, pay some premium and insure their product. In case of any eventualities, the they can be compensated. So if you see this, the stocks or depots, the service cost also increases with the number of depots. And risk cost, which occurs through pilifers, deterioration of stock, damage, stock absolence. So if you keep a inventory for a long period of time, say five years or ten years, or it becomes obsolete, or it sometimes is the technology changes, the inventories may not be suitable for, say, use. And sometimes what happens, natural calamities may happen. So there may be some damage, there may be proliferation, there may be stock theft. So all these are risk costs involved with your inventories. So as I increase the size of the depot, the risk cost also increases accordingly. That means more depots, there is a more cost, say chance of proliferation. There is more chance of deterioration of stock. There is more chance of damage. There is more chance of stock obsolescence. So inventory cost is related to your the inventory cost, capital cost, service cost, and risk cost is also related to your number of depots. And system cost. This cost represents a variety of information or communication requirements ranging from order processing to the load assembly list. The top line on this graph shows the overall distribution cost in relation to the number of depots. Yes. Then we we'll discuss the principles of supply chain. This supply chain consists of many principles and most important principle of supply chain that is, is demand driven. That means supply chain exists not merely because there is something to supply but it exists because there exists a different, definite demand. That means he said that the first why is supply chain exists because supply chain exists because a definite demand. Supply chain exists not merely because there is something to supply. So if I say there is no demand, then there would have been no supply chain. If a company has no demand, so supply chain. So second is about chain approach. Why it is chain approach? You know, supply chain is not the function of any single individual. It gets its get is not getting individual links may be performing well. But if the entire chain is not getting the strength, ultimately is a loss to the chain as a whole. So it is not the strongest link of the chain which decides the strength of the chain. It is the weakest link which decides the strength of a chain. So a chain is only as strong as the weakest link. The concept is about not link optimization but chain optimization. Very important thing the second is this is a chain approach why i will give you an example in supply chain we find different entities like suppliers say manufacturers from distributors retailers and customers now the supply chain gets strength from each of these individual links your supplier is very good your manufacturer is very good but the distributor is not doing his work, is not doing the work properly. That means we cannot say that the supply chain is best because we have a best supplier, best manufacturing 
the uh, facilities, but we have the very weakest link here is the that means the distributor which is not able to say distribute the goods in time and the right place to the customers. So the point to be highlighted here is that the supply chain not gets its strength from the strongest link rather it gets from the weakest link which which decide the strength of the chain is the weakest link which decide the strength of a chain we may have two three very good say chains but if you have one weakest chain then the supply chain is may not be effective so the second principle is said is not, is not about link optimization but chain optimization that means the chain should work in an optimized manner rather than the individual links should work in optimized so the concept is not the link optimization but chain optimization yes the third principle of supply chain is the linkage between links the principle emphasizes the relation and coordination between the links yes the extent and intensity of the relationship are important factors defining the relationship between the link. So the third principle of supply chain is between linkage between links. That means there are different say entities in a supply chain and we have to emphasize the relation and coordination between the links. That means suppliers should give right time raw material to the manufacturing unit. Manufacturing units should produce the goods in right time and distribute to the warehouse or the, the distributors. Distributors should give in right time to the retailers and ultimately the consumer should get right kind of goods and at the right time from the retailers. So extent and intensity are the important factors. The fourth principle of supply chain is smoothness of the flow. That is physical, financial information in the chain. As an analogy, what matters most is the smoothness of the fluid flow in the pipe as compared to the size of the pipe. Yes, the matter is the smoothness of the fluid flow in the pipe as compared to the. So, the fourth principle that there should be smoothness of the physical means the goods and services, financial means the money. Suppose the supplier gives the goods. And the, to the manufacturer, the manufacturer should pay in time to the suppliers. Manufacturers give the goods to the distributors. Distributors should pay in time to the manufacturers. Distributors say gives physical goods to the physical goods to the say retailers. Retailers should pay in time, and retailers give the physical product to the buyers. Or the ultimate customers, the customers should pay the goods in financial or the money in time to the retailer so that there should be smoothness of the flow. And this smoothness also depends on the information that goes between the links, between in the chain. If the information is not proper, if information is not properly disseminated, then the supply chain management may not be effective. So first, fourth principle of is about the smoothness of the flow. The fifth principle is about the optimizing of the resources in the supply chain, in the process of delivering goods and services to end consumers, while simultaneously keeping customer satisfaction objective achieved in most effective and efficient way. So the fifth principle speaks about the optimization of the resources in supply chain. This, how does the supply chain work? The supply chain management is viewed as a system that links an enterprise with its customer and suppliers. Information flows from and about the customer in the form of forecast and, other, and orders to both the enterprises and suppliers. This information is refined through planning into specific manufacturing and purchasing objectives. As materials and products are purchased, a value-added inventory flow is initiated, which ultimately result in ownership transfer 
a finished product to the customers. So the gist of this is this supply chain is viewed as a system that links enterprise with its customers and suppliers. Yes. And supply chain management is an integrated option. Supply chain is an integrated approach that is highly interactive and complex and require simultaneous consideration of many trade-offs. SCM is the management of all key business processes across a number of supply chains. Successful SCM requires change from managing individual function to integrating activities into key supply chain process. So, SCM is an integrated approach and management of all key business across number of supply chains. Yes. Another important concept is customer relationship management. Customer relationship management. This is the process to identify the key customers. With customers moving to central stage, more companies begin to treat customers as value independent entity. Now, I can say that Peter Docker once said, told customers are the king. Why they are called king nowadays? They can, if they want, they can ruin a company and they make a company successful. So, this customer relationship management has become very important because understanding the importance of the customers in a competitive world. So this is the process to identify the key customer. Who are the key customers? With customer moving to the center stage, that means customers are becoming more and more important. So companies have begun to treat customers as value, independent entity. Company no longer view sales as selling of their product, but selling of relationship, solution, support and care. Nowadays, companies no longer interested in, say, value sales as they are selling of their product, but selling of relationship, how you are selling your relationship, how you are giving solution to your problem of your customers, how you are supporting them, how you are caring them. So, Customer relation team develop and implement partnering program with key customers. So I can say that customer relationship management is a strategic options for the organization to develop a long term relationship with the customers. That means product and service agreements specifying the level of performance are established with these key customers. That means this is the process to identify the key customers who are the key customers for you with customers moving to the center stage that means customers becoming more important nowadays companies have tried to treat customers as a value independent entity that means selling they view sales as a selling of their products but as selling of relationship solution and support of care customer service management say there are say components of say service say crm the first component is customer service management increase and intense competition all around have made customer service as the key differentiator in marketing system customer service provides customer service provides only say customer informations it provides the customers with real time information on promised shipping date and product availability customer service is a valuable business activity governing both resource and top management attention customer service being offered in many forms such as post warranty support fast repair speedy response to the service call from customer easy availability of spare qualified component and customer friendly technicians so customer service management has become very very important because of the increase in intense competitions and one company differentiates from another company on the basis of customer service yes 
and what the customer service provide it provides the real time information on promise shipping date where the manufacturer has promised or the warehouse has promised and whether the product availability or not yes customer service is a valuable business activity governing both resources and top management extension customer service is being offered in many forms nowadays you will find warranty support a company gives warranty support fast repairs now there are different com companies have created apps through apps you can contact the after sales speedy response to your service calls from the customers and easy availability if a spare parts are available in the local market and the person who comes for for giving you the repairing work this may be qualified components and customer friendly the second component is demand management yes customer demand is in the form of is always in the form of irregular and order pattern in last source of in the last source of variability so customer demand is dynamic in nature customer demand is dynamic in nature that means it is always regular that means it is always there is a variability given this variability customer ordering demand management is key to an effective scm process now many of the companies are now resorting to say are moving from push system they are moving to a pull system in such case predicting out is the key driver on one which all types of supply will depend the demand management process must balance the customer requirements with supply capabilities a good demand management system uses point of sales and key customer data to reduce logistic and supply chain management that means demand management process must balance the customer requirement what the customer require and what the firm can supply and a good say demand management system uses the point of sale and key customer data to reduce logistic and supply chain management yes the third one is customer order fulfillment is the key to effective scm is to achieve high order fill rate now what is order fill rate order fill rate is the percentage of order fulfilled before or or on the customer need date if the percentage is very high then i say that the the supply chain is very effective suppose in a company the order fill rate percentage is 90% that means 90% of the time the product is delivered on time or before the time performing the order fulfillment process effectively requires integration of firms manufacturing distribution and transporting plants so order fulfillment only be effective not by individual actions but will by integrated integrated actions of the manufacturers distributors and transporters and the transporters yes then logistics and product life cycle product life cycle is a key marketing concept that affects the relationship between logistics and marketing for example a plc has different stages introduction stage growth stage maturity stage and decline stage and in different stages the logistic support is required by the marketing in introduction and growth stage timely cost effective fulfillment order is major requirement because when you are introducing a product the timely cost fulfillment of order is a major requirement so that the product will be accepted by the customers in the growth stage what happen in the growth stage the company is growing and introduction stage the major say challenge before the supply chain management is to fulfill the customer orders on time so that the goods and services will be accepted by the customers but later on as the sales slows down 
and products moves into the maturity and declining stage the company changes to trimming cost as the product face steep price competition and consequent pressure on margins therefore there is a need for logistic manager to understand what marketing is trying to achieve and with which product and what appropriate level of logistic support is required so here there is in the introduction and growth stage here say the order is a major cost of effective fulfillment is a major requirement <coughs> where in during the slow down stage or maturity stage the trimming cost is a trimming cost is a alternative before the supply chain manager yes now areas of logistic and marketing interaction now areas of logistic and marketing in interaction is today's competitive environment organizations are utilizing the benefits of their established logistic and marketing interference to be competitive not in terms of product and price but also logistic is tailored to meet individual customer needs the organizations are able to differentiate themselves from their competitors by offering a total service with logistic forming an essential part of the total value chain yes now take a example of fmcg likes a procter and gamble and hindustan lever both have the products both have qualitative products both have price but if the products are not available in a so the retail shop i go i find there is more of say procter and gamble product where we don't find the product of hindustan lever now the company is not to be blamed here the company is not to be blamed here because both are multinational company who is to be blamed the supply chain management of the respective companies are to be blamed now i say that when the products of say procter and gamble is available in the retail store when i need i say that the scm of say procter and gamble is performing efficiently whereas the the uh, scm of say hindustan lever is not performing as par with the say hindus in the uh, procter and gamble therefore he said that the organizations are able to differentiate themselves by their competitors by offering total service with logistic form an essential part of the total what is total service here good quality product at a competitive price after sales service is along with that say logistic forming an essential part of the total value chain that means the goods should be say available in right time at the right place now this can be a major product design this can be a major effect on warehouse and transportation pricing this is mean by which logistic service customer demand affects the overall cost of the product and in turn organization's pricing policy market and sales forecast marketing forecast will largely di dictate the level of logistic resources and need to move product to this customers and customer service policy the marketing opts to offer a very responsive level of service to the customers logistic resources in the form of facilities and inventory will need to be very considerable yes now this is one of the greatest area of contentions now we see that number of and location of this is one of the greatest area of contentions can only be satisfactorily resolved with the marketing and logistic develop the policy jointly inventory policy this is another area of contention a decisions have a significant bearing on the operation cost and extent to which desired level of customer service are achieved it is another key area where policy should be jointly developed by the marketing and so the policy should to maintain an optimum inventory if too much inventory is a concern too less inventory is also a concern order processing responsibility for who receive customer orders and speed the efficiency 
and speed and efficiency with which they are processed has a major impact on the operation cost and customer perception of the service level. This is another area where jointly policy making is preferable. That means when you make an order processing policy, it should be the joint responsibility of the marketing and operations people. Channels of distribution. So what type of channels you will decide decision to deliver direct to the customers or through intermediaries will largely influence the level of logistic resources required. Say a channel change, so too will the resources required. Marketing should definitely concern with logistic when they making channel decisions. So what type of channels a market will decide? So that will depends on your say marketing department. Now, before I end, I will add something which is say very important nowadays. The important thing is what is the say say CRM interface with manufacturing. So there is a definite interface between logistics and manufacturing. This interface is very crucial. This interface is crucial for efficient supply chain management. It involves coordination, okay? coordination of production schedules and inventory levels and transportation to ensure seamless operations and timely delivery. There are different components of this interface. There is the interface between logistic and manufacturing. First one is demand forecasting. Both logistic and manufacturing need accurate demand forecasting to plan production schedule and optimize inventory levels. So when you have an interface between logistics and manufacturing, we just discussed, we just discussed the difference between say uh, interface between say logistics and marketing now discussing the the relation between logistics and manufacturing second one is production planning and scheduling manufacturing plans production based on demand forecast to plan production schedules and optimize inventory levels Third one is inventory management. Logistic and manufacturing must collaborate on inventory levels. Real time tracking helps to prevent stockouts or overstock situations. That means inventory management is very crucial and logistic and, and manufacturing must collaborate, must work with on inventory level. Real time tracking helps to prevent stockouts. So we should say track on real time. That means to prevent stockouts and overstock and communication and information sharing. Regular communication and data sharing between manufacturing and logistics team are essential because this includes order status, production updates, transportation details. Then another component is technology integration that employing integrated software systems such as ERP to ensure seamless flow of information. That means nowadays companies are adopting more, more or less say technology employing integrated software systems and one of the system is ERP to ensure seamless flow of information. Lead time management, understanding and managing lead time is crucial for manufacturing for, for manufacturing. Lead time impact when logistics need to be prepared for transportation and delivery. So lead time management is very important. So understanding and managing lead time is crucial. Manufacturing lead times impact when logistics 
Then reverse logistic is an important concept. The interface involves. So why reverse logistics occurs? Because there are sometimes the products may be defectives. The products may be sometimes returned. And this is the interface involved managing returns and handling defective products. So to talk about the interface between logistics and manufacturing, there is a crucial relationship for effective supply chains and there are a lot of components, demand forecasting, production planning and inventory communication. Thank you. We will meet in the next session tomorrow.